Um, but yeah, go, going on to the next question, um, we, you know, you spoke about journalism, your, your journey in journalism, and there might be some people listening who, you know, are really interested in journalism, whether that's because, you know, they studied it or because it's a passion of theirs and they might be thinking, wow, you know, I'd really love to get into journalism. I've, I've heard Shania speak. She's given amazing pieces of advice. Um, but they might be thinking, what's, what's three tips that I could get? So essentially our question to you, Shania, is for anyone looking to get into journalism, what are three tips that you would like to give them? Oh, so this is really hard because I feel like I don't want to give the generic kind of vague answers that everybody else gives. But also my brain is not working enough to give anything more than that. So definitely networking. Networking is key always. And I know everybody says that. And I hate it when people used to say this to me because I'm like, yeah, okay, I get it. Like, okay. But even if you don't go uni, I think uni is the best place to gain that like it worked to me that's how I got the experiences that I have and I know a lot of people in my class has gotten the experiences that they have through our lecturers sending us opportunities so one thing about uni is that but even just networking in general like go to places go reach out um even now I plan to work with a company upcoming company called Levels where they introduce new music artists and I was like you've got a website there's nothing on your website too much like and you're having all these artists here why don't you have somebody do pieces on them and write out for you um and I offered that for myself because personally I don't have the best portfolio which I'm gonna that's my second tip but um so just like finding opportunities in places so meeting people and seeing like if you're interested in that company or what they're doing, where you could fit and how you could aid them. And it could work. Sometimes you can get paid for it. Sometimes you won't. But regardless, it's networking. And through Levels, I've met so many artists. And through that, I can meet so many other artists and I can continue to grow my network. Um, so uni is not the only space you can get networking experience. Get networking, yeah, get networking experience. It's dumb. <laughs> you can gain networking, but just going out there and just really finding those people to talk to. And those people who you talk to will know other people who can help you. So really just getting yourself out there. And I know it's hard and it's like daunting to really just be like, hi, I'm this person and I want to do this. But that's the only way you can really get into places if you really put yourself out there. Um, the job I got with the Express, um, it was at a networking event. And I met my my now boss. Um, he said he noticed me because I, when I left the table of him talking, I shook his hand and I said, thank you very much. And things like that mean something to people, make an impression always when you're networking. Um, I didn't mean to, I was just being, I just used to my manners. <laughs> my mom taught me some manners, so I was just using my manners. But he was like, that really stood out to me. So things like that matter. Um, and then at the end of the day, he pulled me to the side to say thank you. I was the only one who said that. And he was very impressed by me. And we sat down and we spoke. And on that spot, he offered me a job. So it was really, it was, it was really great. Because at that point, I left retail. Sorry, I'm off a little. But <laughs> at that point, I was really down with my mental health. Um, I had severe depression and I just re left retail to get out of that space because I was I was stuck I needed more money and I couldn't get it um so one thing I value is helping my family and at that point I couldn't do that and it really just left me in a stuck position so I left retail and it allowed me to then network more and have these opportunities to then meet people who offered me jobs where now I'm good so networking is key that's one tip got there in the end um second tip <laughs> portfolio always have a build your portfolio even if it's on like the most silliest thing one thing I learned about people's entertainment is they love dumb things um which is great because like you said nobody wants to be sad right all the time so they value learning about really silly things but do you know the most do you know what the most successful topic is right now it's stupid conversation about Harry Styles and that woman I don't know what that woman's name is but like everybody's talking about that one woman in that film and I'm like this is not very interesting but like so many people are writing about it or making TikToks about it and it's so popular so even if it's the most silliest thing it doesn't have to be the most detrimental thing I definitely make a portfolio and write it make videos do whatever you can build up your portfolio that is key 
um, I'm doing that myself. It's something that I'm working on myself because my portfolio is shabby. It is awful. Um, but I know when I don't want to work in news a newspaper for very long, I want to extend and go other places. And I know I'm going to need to work on my portfolio to do that. So I think that's key. Family. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and then... So yeah, portfolio is, is definitely very key. And then to make, what I learned from a networking event as well is to make content that you want to go into. So the company that you want, like she worked in Sky News and she was like, I look at people's social medias. I look at people, like everything, their personal social media, their Twitter. You don't think they're doing that. They are definitely doing that. They're looking at everything that you do. And if you don't have evidence of you writing or putting stuff out there that you care about, that's related to the industry you want to go into, then they're not going to choose you. Um, so get, get your portfolio up. Um, and then thirdly, I don't know actually. I feel like I, I said so much in the two. <laughs> I don't know for the third one. Um, be just just have faith in yourself. A lot of the time, it's really difficult to do that. Um, be my friends and I were in incredible places at such young ages, and it it wasn't easy to get into. It wasn't a it wasn't an easy thing to just do. But if you really have faith in yourself, you can go into wherever you want to go into. Like, I really had to bargain and take a chance, take, take a chance on myself to really be like, okay, I need to get out of this space. So I need to go somewhere else and do better for myself. Um, and it and it did work out. And sometimes it doesn't work out straight away. Like I know some of my friends are doing teaching right now, but they're doing teaching to get out of retail. And it's not what their degree is at all. It's not what they want to do, but it's something it's a step forward so even if it's not something that you want to do is a leap of faith in yourself to do better and um, that is no discredit to retail workers by the way I shout out to all my retail workers it is a very admirable job trust me I could not work there that's why I know it's admirable because it's a tough industry to be committed to but yeah just have faith in yourself and and wonderful opportunities will come because it's just it's not a race it's a journey so I'm some some poetic no, no, no. Um, I think a round of applause should be well will be heard at this point because I think all three, all three, yeah, um, all three like pieces of, of information were amazing, and uh, I will try and break down all three. Uh, yeah, I will try and break down all three. I think first off, like you said, yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Wish me luck. Like. A lot of <laughs> Honestly, I think that's all really important because I think, like you said, networking is so key. Um, I think also, like you said as well, standing out. Like, I think, I think there's there's like always that line where people just like stand. Like, yes, you should stand out on networking events, but it's kind of like what you said. You don't need to like, I don't know, you know, be that person who you like. Yeah. I guess be like doing stuff that you wouldn't normally do. Like if, yeah. if it wasn't, if it wasn't there. So like you said, like, you know, saying thank you and shaking the person's hand, like, that, like, like you said, that's just manners. Like, that's yeah. just, that, like that's just manners. Um, so I feel like hundred percent is true. Um, and it's, and like you said, it doesn't need to be massive. It doesn't need to be, you know, you, you know, saying, Oh, you know, like you, like you said, you didn't even have to say like, Oh, I'm really interested in knowing more about you. I'd love to get your email. Address. Like yeah. you literally just shook the person's hand and said, thank you very much. And just left. That's another thing. Don't write people off. What really mm. vexed me was that, like, everyone was like, oh, you're going to work for... So I work for the Daily Express, which is a conservative newspaper. I'm far from conservative. I'm so out of touch with that. And actually, me and my manager bond over the fact that we're so different. He's such... He's an old white man. <laughs> an old straight white man. And I'm completely opposite to that. And he speaks about, like different things he doesn't believe in which is so far from what I believe in um but it's like don't overwrite things just because they don't align with what you believe in those opportunities will bless you like loads of people in my class because he was looking for another person as well and he was like who would you recommend and I extended it to the people in my class it's like hey guys he's looking for another person what do you think and a lot of them turned it down just because it was a conservative newspaper and it was just like, okay, I understand that it doesn't align with your beliefs, but those opportunities can get you somewhere. Just to have that on your CV is incredible. Um, obviously, don't sell your soul, but it's not that deep if you just take a leap of faith into what you're doing. 
Um, so from this, I can get into more jobs in the in the company, which will align with what I want to do. And I don't have to practice the speech that I don't agree with. I can write my own things. Um, I can bring a different voice to the newspaper. You can do anything, but don't write things off. And I think that gets me a lot about people. It's like they're too quick to be like, this is not what I want to do. This is not where I want to go. So I'm not going to do it. But you, you don't have an experience at all. So you need something. And that's something that you can do to get you into places. So that's another thing. No, I definitely agree. Uh, and I think that kind of links with like we were saying about like the portfolio, because it's it's having those you know examples of your work. You're like mm-hmm. whatever it is, is is always important too, and not writing off opportunities. So I know like even um like as uh for like for my undergraduate, we had to do a video. We did both a blog in our first year, and then we had to write a video uh, we had to do a video of um an environmental issue. So you have to just record a video um talking about an environmental issue you, you were passionate about, and then you know, you'd be asked questions about it. And I think the reason why I really liked that is because one, I really liked video editing at the time anyway. So I was just like, this is this is perfect for me. Um, but also it's kind of like putting, I guess, two parts of my degrees. It's sort of like what I was saying before about what you knowing what you do like and you don't. So I, I basically, after doing, well, probably early on, but even after doing my undergrad, I was just like, yeah, I personally don't see myself working in a lab. Um, I was just like, it, it's not for me. But I said, I really do like creating stuff or like making things easier for like the general public to understand when it comes to environmental issues. Because I said, mm-hmm. there is that tendency for like, words to be thrown out or like reports to be made and people are just like yeah cool this is like talking about climate change but it's like a hundred page report and most people probably won't read that and even if you have like a summary it's still kind of long um so i said that it's really important to have like people who whether they make videos or they do talks or whatever to just like not you're not dumbing it down but you're just making it relatable for the audience that you want to essentially address um, and I think that that's so true with your portfolio, because showing these examples of stuff, especially when it's something that, you know, you you, you had two options. So sort of like what I was saying there, of, you know, you had something that was quite complicated, but then you made it relatable for people who had no expert, uh, no experience or no expertise in that area. That's, that's amazing, because that shows that, you know, you can target content for different people and ensure that whoever they are, whether they're, I don't know, like you were saying, like, you know, a young um a young person who's you know knows a bit about climate change or they're a climate denier you know they'll still be able to to get it but even it's up to them essentially if they want to believe it or not um and then i think lastly like you said um like believing in yourself and having faith in yourself is so important and so true um because like i've i've heard it said before i've said it myself that you know especially when you're younger I'm not saying like, again, I've, I've repeated this many times. I'm not saying that young, you know, just because you're young, you should take every risk that comes to you. I, I'm, I'm really emphasizing that. Even, I know like I'm, I made a joke before about like, I'm not saying, like me personally, I don't know about Bitcoin. So I'm not saying everyone needs to go into Bitcoin, <laughs> uh, cryptocurrency and all of this. Uh, but I'm saying that like, you know, as a young person, you've, you've got the opportunity to like, try out new things and yes sometimes they don't always pay off but you can still be like yeah i tried it um because i feel like that's like you said it's, it's something like you never know where those things will happen um or like what can happen from those things so i know for example um like like as a young person one of the people on the team um the that's uh co-host uh michelle um she literally uh she uh, had like a dissertation project about you know creating resources for young people to deal with uh climate anxiety and i was like wow it's really cool you know i, I was just like i don't know if she'll want to be on the episode but i said hey let me just send an invite i sent an invite she said we did the episode she was happy to be on it and then as a team we all just like wow you know she's really cool she you know she seemed really you know passionate about it let's see if she wants to be on it and i was like if you guys are happy for it i'll ask her and see see what happens and yeah she, she's agreed to be on the team um but it's one of those things where you know if i you know didn't try it i wouldn't have like that never would have happened um and it's just about being like being okay to take risks um you might not necessarily always know the result but it's always better to take a risk than to not take one um so yeah i i, I think I, I i broke them i think i broke down all three uh, um but i think it's, <laughs> Oh, oh, you did a great job of breaking down my nonsense into some sense. No, 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 honestly, no, no, no. Um, like I said, it was really, it was really impactful and really, really meaningful. Um, I guess that kind of nicely leads on. It's our last question before we go on to uh, passing the mic, where Shania will be asking me. Uh, she's got three questions for me. So again, I'm going to try and try and answer those to, to the best of my ability. So uh, fingers crossed for that section. Um, but yeah, before before we you know go to that section, Shania, 
we just want to know what's next for you. Now, this could be whether, you know, you, you briefly mentioned, you know, for why and the, the podcast. So it could be a bit more about that. Um, but it could just generally be about, you know, your your life in general and, you know, the things that you're expecting to come in the future. Oh, that's a good question. Um, to be honest, I'm the type of person to just go with the flow. <laughs> um, go with the flow of life. I know that's very vague, but I think that's where it's gotten me so far. Um, a lot of the things which I'm not advising for people to do. Um, a lot of things that's happened to me has been just going off of a woman and believing in myself. Um, the motto that I kind of go with is the worst thing someone can say is no, um, which is not bad at all. Um, it doesn't do anything for me. It's disappointing, but it doesn't do much for me. So I think wherever I kind of want, I kind of just want to stick with the jobs I have for a bit longer. Um, like I said, it's not exactly where I want to be. And it's incredible to be where I am. Um, I think I need to give myself credit that much. Every time someone does that, I'm like, oh, I'm doing okay. But it is, it is a really good place to be in, um, especially at 22 as well. Um, so I'm kind of just riding the wave of what I'm doing right now. Like I said, I'm starting the project with Levels, the music company. Uh, hopefully we'll build my portfolio with them and have opportunities to write for them and build a um, musical journalism portfolio um finish my master's that's that's key that's the first thing that's coming up that's in December that's soon um that's scary um finish my master's and yeah just ride the wave um I don't recommend it for everybody everybody has their own journey everyone has some people have their plans which work for them but for me I'm kind of just seeing where these opportunities take me and then what may come um, there's nothing massive in the plan. Hopefully for why we'll start back up. You'll hear more commentary about things that me and Julie care about and we'll make fun of them. I think the last episode I said I don't want to kill myself anymore. So we're gonna go with that. We're gonna keep we're gonna keep that energy and hopefully um more per like more more great content will come. Um I definitely feel restricted in one of my jobs and I wanna fly more creatively so that's that's what i am in the future wow wow powerful 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 and what a powerful way uh to uh to end i guess our first official part and uh yeah i've, I've got i've got nothing else to add to that but to wish you all the best uh and i look forward to seeing all the amazing things that you do in the future um has it been more than an hour Am I talking about? Uh, yeah, but, oh, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's like I said, the conversations are. In, I'm enjoying the conversation. I'm sure our <laughs> listeners enjoy the conversation, uh, and that's all that matters. Um, but we're now going to go on to passing the mic, uh, where I will virtually uh, pass the mic over to uh, Shania and put myself in the hot seat. Uh, so, Shania, like I said, Shania has prepared three three questions for me. So. Uh, I, I will try, like I said, to the best of my ability to answer all three to, uh, to you know, Shania's standard. She set a high standard for for the, uh, for the answers today, so I'm going to have to try and meet that. So, uh, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to... Okay. I spoke a lot about a whole bunch of nothing, but something was in there. <laughs> so. No, 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 no. It was, it was very, like I said, very impactful, very true, uh, and I'm sure our audience appreciated it. So, uh, yeah, I'm now going to hand over to Shania. Could you please let us know if, if we do them one at a time, one at a time, so I, so I can also remember the questions. Uh, uh, so, yeah, so let's start with question one. Okay, so question one is, how does your podcast inspire your audiences beyond education? Yeah, so a very good question right at the bat. Um, <laughs> I think I think the way that it does, uh, so this is also very impactful because I had, uh, so I'm part of the incubator program to just basically, like, I guess, quick shout out. So Bruno Entrepreneur Hub, they do incubator programs that you can apply. Um, and whether you've got like a business idea or you've got an actual business, you can say, you, know, you can be a part of it and, you know, say you want to turn something into a business. Um, and I literally had a conversation about this, uh, something similar about this uh, yesterday. And it was on the idea of, you know, all the content that you're producing, um, what, like it needs to go through essentially three aims. Uh, and as a team, we've, we've got three aims, which is essentially the first one is to basically, you know, share our experience uh, as a team, but also the experience of our guest speakers uh, like yourself um, and just talk about, you know, these are the things that we've been through or these are things that we've done or we've learned and we're advising people on that stuff. Um, the second thing is to also give that platform for individuals to speak so, because we said as a team, um, you know, there's that tendency for, 
I guess I, I really don't want to sound harsh, but like we just said, like when it comes to like, I don't know, like certain podcasts or like certain things, you could feel like, oh, you know, it's always like this successful big name person. And, you know, they're, they're not in the, the same shoes as me. They're not a student or, you know, they were, they were shooting ages ago. So they didn't know what I'm going through. Um, and we were just like, no, you know, it'd be really good to get someone who's, who's a young person or a student or whoever who, who's got that experience. And they're just like, yeah, you know, I'm happy to talk about this topic that I'm passionate about. Um, yeah, so that's the second thing. And then third thing is we like to share like resources uh, and stuff that, and people that do like incredible work, uh, you know, obviously the MC of the month section, um, which are linked to what we talk about in the episodes. Um, and I feel like regarding like, I guess, post, uh, like getting, encouraging people past education, um, you know, we are literally, our, like our first episode was on following your passion uh, in a difficult world. And we were saying like how hard it is for individuals, especially young people, we said like to follow, to feel like you can follow your passion when, you know, I don't know, like the time we were recording was during COVID. So we were just like, it's a bit hard to go into the career that you might have originally wanted to. Um, but we were saying that, and, you know, we, we the three of us uh, at the time were saying that we all feel like it's better for you to do something that like obviously I know, and I'm not saying like, you know, do something that won't pay you because you enjoy it because no, yes, finance should should also pay a part in your decision. But I'm, I, I've always said that, like, it's really important to to work somewhere where you love and to love the work that you're doing, because um, kind of like what, you know, Shania was mentioning but also, you know, what we, I guess we've been talking about through the whole episode, you know, there will be times when you're just like, gosh, this, is, or like this sucks, or this <laughs> is so long. I can't believe, like, I agree to do this. Um, you know, there are sometimes like, I'm, uh, when it comes to pick up the mic, I'm like, wow, this is really fun. It's really engaging. And then there's sometimes like, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, the, the editing sometimes for me, especially when there's like loads of videos to edit, I'm just like, gosh, man, why did I do like so many episodes in one week and tell them I send it by this date. Um, but it's always about like remembering why you started. Um, and I feel like that's the the main thing that we say that, you know, as individuals, you know, we've got our different experience. We've all learned different things, we're all at different points in our careers. Um, and we're just like, you know, whether you want to go to university or not, that's perfectly fine to you. Whether you want to, you know, start a business or not, that's perfectly fine. It's up to you, but just do something that you love. Um, and we just, you know, encourage people that when you, like if you're at education and you graduated or you've just finished your A-levels, just always make sure that you're doing something, whether it's your degree, your job, uh, a side hustle or whatever, that you're doing it because you love it and not because you want to make money or you want to be a, you know, you, you know that industry is quite in, like well-known or it's quite important at the moment. So you're just doing it for that. Like just do something because you love it. And that's, uh, yeah, I guess that's the most important thing in life. Yeah. That's a good answer. I agree with that. Thank you. Like, um, I know that like one of my jobs I'm doing is a great name, but it's this this overhyped, and I'm not gonna say what one of the two that I said, but <laughs> I completely understand that. So good, good answer, Jeffrey. Really, really tied it all back in there. See you. Um, the next question is, how do you think young creators like me can encourage others or provide some resources of support? Um, so I think that's one, again, a really important question because I feel like as a, as a young person who creates, um, there is, like I said before, that, that tendency that when you see others who are doing it and they maybe have more followers or, you know, more people engaged or, you know, they've got a Patreon page, more people are subscribed. You're kind of like, gosh, man, like what I would love to have that, um, you know, to be at that stage. Um, and I feel like, especially for sometimes for individuals who, want to go into those fields so like we said you know want to start a podcast or want to start like a tiktok page which shares resources it can sometimes feel a bit off-putting because you're just like oh gosh i don't really know if that's the right thing to do um so i would say it's just like kind of like what you know what you said do that you already do uh, and sort of like what we try and do uh or what we do on the podcast is like you know just have open conversations be be honest about stuff um you know whether it's about your personal journey so you know things that went well things that didn't went well um whether it's about your your experience so like you said you know you 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 know whether you're talking about like we said before about oh yeah i really didn't enjoy my degree or like oh this module didn't wasn't great like or this or that or whatever like it's just being honest with people because i feel like that's when it comes to like uh you know when you're talking about support you can offer others because people will be like wow you know this person's being really honest on their on their journey and they're showing you know it wasn't easy or you know i'm, I'm seeing them grow as they produce their content, um, it's, it's so important. Um, and then regarding like resources of support, um, just, yeah, just shout out a resource that's, that's helped you, uh, whether like, whether it's, you know, like something 
something that helps you with your podcasting or your editing or someone that offers like useful tips and stuff. Um, because I feel like that's something that people will always appreciate. So like I said, yes, we do the MC of the month sections and share like people who are relevant to what we're talking about in the episode. Um, I also feel like it is really good to just shout out some, whether it's an organization, teams or individuals um, who do work that you're just like, I'm not shouting them out because I'm getting paid or I'm sponsored. Like I'm shouting them out because I think they do really good work. And if yeah. you want to do what I do, this is what like you should be using them. Um, so yeah, so I feel like that. And that's where, you know, that open transparency, people are more like, okay, you're not shouting them out because they're, you know, paying you or anything like that. You're shouting them out because they are essentially yeah. supporting you and making things easier for you. So yeah, that'd be my answer. That's good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, what is the best advice or information you have received from one of your speakers that has personally stuck with you and improved you either at work or within your studies? Uh, so I won't say the speaker. Uh, so, so I don't get, so I don't get other speakers coming from me uh, and uh, you know, I have to issue a few apologies. <laughs> um, I mean, this is tough, I guess. Okay. So, 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 okay. Before I say it, I will say one thing. Um, that I mean, it sounds like really fake, but I I do genuinely feel like all the speakers that we do have on, then I, I do agree. Like all the speakers that we do have on, there is always something that I do learn from each episode. Uh, yeah, each episode of recording that I feel like it's true. like that. That's true. They they all do like encouraging, thi oh, inspiring things. I'm just like whether it's I don't know something small like how they create their content or how they're able to manage two things at once. I'm like, mm. yeah, it's really cool. Um, oh, one thing that stuck. It's okay if it's me, you know. Yeah. Right, let them know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, like I said, uh, today's one has been really interesting. Um, hmm. Oh man, this is really hard because now, like, also because like, even though it's only been like we've only done it for like over a year, we've done a lot of episodes, and so now I'm also just trying to think uh, who hold. Even if it's just uh, like that someone said it doesn't even have, something that someone said. If it's something that someone said, um, I would be like. Uh, oh, it was something someone said. Um, I've shouted them out before, um, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get them on the episode uh, on the podcast. Um, so there are these podcasters called um, the Pod School, uh, Pod Sound School, um, and they do like podcasting tips uh, about like if you're interested in podcasting or you want to start a podcast, things like that. You know, these are some of the tips that they would offer. Um, I think the reason why I really like them is because, like me, both of them don't have previous podcasting experience like when they started their podcast they were, I think one of them was a lawyer I've forgotten what the other one was but they had no experience in that field and the fact that they've like made it a business they they have like courses they do they do a lot of things and I was just like that to me is very relatable because as a team none of us have done podcasting before this is all new to us so I feel like that's probably someone that's like that that stuck with me because it's been like you know if they're able to do it and they're just sharing things that they've learned through their journey then I can do the same thing and you know know that that's a point that I can reach um I do want to say it's one person so I will say one I guess one episode that really stuck with me um was I think our episode oh so the person so, okay so I will say this the person didn't say this uh so we had a guest speaker uh you know I'll shout, I'll shout the person out uh, called Vanessa so she didn't so we did an episode with her about music and mental health um oh. and I think she so she um she is a she does a lot of things with mental health with musicians anyways and talking so she's a DJ and she works with an organization uh, and I definitely recommend checking the episode out but one thing that I saw through her Instagram page was she interviewed uh I think while she was at university she interviewed Sir David Attenborough um and she was just like oh you know like what's one tip you would give to like an expire and um like a someone who wants to be a do uh, make documentaries or things like that and he was just like just do it like whether you are in your like you want to record like animals in your back garden or you want to you know go out and record plastic pollution in your city like just do it because he said that's more inspiring one to individuals but also to to people who are looking to employ you said so that's more interesting than you like putting oh i've worked with you know these organizations i've made these documentaries he said no if you like how many people when they go into the interview will be like oh you know have you got any questions it's just like oh yeah um i haven't got a question but i'd love to show you my documentaries you know i won't show you the whole thing but i'm happy to share the link with you or you know i'm happy to you know 
play a bit of it now if you ha- if you've got some time um because he was just like that's more and like we were saying before about me being, being memorable and i'm not saying like oh you know now if you want to go into making you know if you want to go and work in film or you want to do a documentary like you have to now do that but i'm saying that you know try and do these things that make you stand out um yeah. because those they're so important and i am gonna say one thing because it's gonna annoy me if i don't um i just need to think of the episode oh yeah okay so the episode that it was um was i think it was in season two and it was about graduate opportunities um and this is something i had never done before and it stuck with me and even though i haven't done it oh i've done it a bit um the person was basically just saying like oh you as an individual uh especially if you're a recent graduate and you haven't whether you're looking for employment you want to change employment she was saying if you find someone on linkedin that works for an organization that you want to whether they're in the hiring team or not is irrelevant just reach out to them if they're if they're an alumni from your university or from your school even better but she was just like she messaged uh individuals through linkedin to just be like oh you know I would love to work for your organization. Do you have any roles? Um, if you don't have any roles, I'd just love to know more about your organization because that's somewhere that I would really love to work. And I was just like, wow, you know, you're not really A, taught that at uni, but I was also just like, B, it's not really something that I guess you would really do because you, you sort of feel like, oh, that's kind of like fake because I'm just like, oh, hi, you know, like <laughs> even whether you've applied for the job or not, you just feel like, oh gosh, like you're, you're doing something that, you know, you feel like you shouldn't be doing. But she was just like, no, like, you know, it's very important for you to do that because that makes you, again, that standout thing. But I, I do want to emphasize, it's not because you're doing it for, for doing its sake you know you stand out because you really are passionate about the organization um but she was just saying like that's so true like go out there and just message like someone who works in the t- in, in that company and just be like hi you know i'd really love to work for i don't know like microsoft you know what like i'd love to know like what experience you needed for your job or even just i'd love to know like if you've got any like events that i could just meet people in the team like i don't necessarily you know i'm not saying i want to i want a job now but it's somewhere that i'd love to work in the future and i feel like that stuck with me because like I said it's something that you don't really hear people doing and the fact that she got a job from it as well and when she told me she got a job from it I was like wow it clearly works so <laughs> I should definitely start to do it um but yeah I feel like that's just, like as young people that's just something that we're not told and we also sort of feel like oh gosh like doing that it's like putting us ab- like above the playing field and we're, we somehow have an unfair advantage but no it's you know something that people do do um so yeah that would be my like one one uh i mean i gave like three different bits of advice there but i think that would be my from a guest speaker that would probably be the one that stuck with me the most that's that's incredible because um yeah it's kind of almost what i was gonna say with the david asper thing um you almost seem like it's an inconvenience almost to be like can you look at my thing i would almost feel like that's rude um to do so but the fact that it's actually worked is interesting like it's making me um rethink the perspective of it like oh, maybe that actually does, it's something you should do. Like at all points, always offer your work to be like, this is this is me and this is what I can do. Um, which is interesting because I'm always like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that, you know? Like it's just a bit, uh, yeah, that's interesting. And like I said, always stand out. And I think I want to do that too because there's been some opportunities where it's just like you, you apply on LinkedIn and like you hear nothing from anybody and you never get anything. Um, so I guess going through the company and actually finding someone and following them and messaging them is something that I, I'm going to take as well. Thank you for that, because I wouldn't have done it otherwise either. Like I, like I said, to have faith in yourself and be confident, but things like social media are so daunting to me. And it's so, which is so dumb because it's literally your phone and their phone or, or their computer. And you don't actually see them. For some reason, I'm such a people person. So I like to have in-person interactions to then offer myself and this is my skills and this is who I am more than social media so to, to then be like to bother someone on their phone for me is more scary than in person it's very strange but I guess I'm going to take that opportunity as well if I if I ever want to move on to a different companies or anything I know where to go to so thank you for that no you're welcome and it's it's just like like when the person said it I was just like wow like you said like you you just feel like you're you're doing something wrong but <laughs> it's it's actually really good and even like with the documentary thing so she was um like he also said like with, like not only just for like documentaries even if i don't know you want to work uh so like for example like i said i don't have any previous like i didn't study marketing i didn't study social media managing or anything like that or like video editing or film studies um but it's a passion of mine 
and you know you can and like uh, what the uh, Vanessa was saying in that episode you know if you show that you know in your free time you you podcast or you make music or things like that that also isn't you I guess showing off that's you just saying that you know that's something that you do um so like for example um I know that's one thing that I've now started to do is in my it's not on my like experience thing and maybe later on I might add it but like I do add that like in my um like achievement section like I've started a podcast with and you know just I've just put a brief description there and if at an interview it's brought up I will just be like yeah so this is what the podcast is about this is what I do um you know this is how we we like this is why I did it this is why it, how it helps people and things like that because it's one of those things where it's just like yeah it stands out um I know one example where that did help me um was I applied for a placement, a summer placement uh, in the second year of my undergraduate. Um, and it was the interview process. And they were, you know, typical like, oh, name is the time and this didn't work or something like that. Um, and I guess a side thing I do, apart from pick up the mic, is also run a page with my sister called New Generation, which was all about, uh, you know, encouraging people to live sustainably, talking about like the different ways that you can, um, getting like whether they're designers or individuals who just upcycle or thrift clothes, you know, talking about their experience and asking them some questions. Um, so yeah, so we used to do fashion shows before COVID. Um, and I just, you know, just in the interview just said, yeah, oh yeah. So, um, I do this, we, we host fashion shows, uh, you know, there were some logistical issues. Um, and then we were able to work it, make it work in the end. And they were just like, really, you do a sustainable fashion thing. And I was like, yeah, uh, just, just start it, just run it. Um, did it, like do it with my sister. Um, and they was like, wow. So tell us more about that. And we spoke about that for a bit. Um, but yeah, like, I'm like, I don't know if that helped me get the job or not, but it's one of those things where it's just like people, like, even when I got the job and I was like in the, you know, working with that, with that team, you know, people are saying, oh, you know, this is Jeffrey, this, he's the guy with the, you know, sustainable fashion thing that I was telling you about. And I was like, I don't even know you, but thanks for letting me know that you know me. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I definitely feel like it's true that even like your, the creative things that you do, like including those, whether it's on your CV or, you know, discussing those in interviews is really important because, you know. A, it shows like you're, you've got the skills and they're transferable skills, but also it's like that that eye catching thing of oh, you know, I've seen loads of applicants today who who are you know who told me that they have the experience or they've worked in all these organizations, but I've never heard someone tell me that they've started like a sustainable fashion thing or they've started a podcast or a YouTube page about this or that. So I think yeah, it's it's all about doing those things that you know showing your your passions in your interview and not feeling like oh my passion can't help me with my career. Um no your passion can because it shows that you've got those skills and you don't need to feel like you know putting it there on your CV or discussing it in interviews is somehow giving you an unfair advantage. 100%. That's um, what helped me with BICE as well because my we had to audition to be a presenter for them and everybody did their... To, it, he was like, just send a video, any interpretation you want of what that means, just send a video. Um, and one of my friends did a fashion, a fashion TikTok because that's what she's passionate about. And then other people did... One guy did Eurovision and we're just like, different interpretations of that. And I was like, I could talk about a topic or I could just lay it out as it is. And I basically filmed a video and said, hey, this is me, this is who I am, um, this is what I'm passionate about, and then gave an example of why that's important to for today. So um, I think one of my examples was like Kanye West, um, how he influences the black community and conversations about that. And because talking about black issues is important to me. Um, so, it was just like that. And then I, I went into how he's a hot topic and stuff like that. And then it was just a quick wrap up video and then sent it off and I was successful. So I agree, talking about who you are and your passion is important. Like every element of who you are can get you somewhere. So it's, it's, a, good, it's a good thing to, to do, to talk about. Definitely, definitely. I 100% agree. And that sort of nicely uh, leads on to our, our our last, I guess, last MC of the month for season four, which uh, I know for, for our listeners, uh, there must be a very emotional moment for you, but uh, I promise uh, we, we will be back more and I'll talk about that more towards the end. But um, yeah, essentially, our MCs of the month uh, are essentially 
where we upload the podcast uh, and they are Buzzsprout. Uh, so there's, like I said, there are a lot of places that can help you um, when it comes to like podcast uh, work or like uploading podcasts. Um, but today I wanted to talk about, you know, our our experience and the one that we use. Uh, so we use Buzzsprout. So for anyone wondering, Buzzsprout is basically just like a podcast uh, hosting site where you essentially can upload your podcast. You can discuss, uh, uh, you know, you can see some really good analytics. You can compare analytics with global stats when it comes to podcasting and their global stats. Um, but the reason why I really like uh, Buzzsprout is, is for two reasons. So one, they have a really great YouTube channel which and website, which is some of the stuff is included in both. But essentially, they've got stuff about like how to start a podcast and they always release one, like an updated version every year. So like, okay, uh, in a couple of months, you know, in 2023, they'll do a how to start a podcast in 2023 and let you know, you know, what are the things you need to think about? So do you, if you're going to have your camera on, do you like what type of camera you should be looking for? Um, if you've got a budget, you know, these are the type of microphones you could buy type thing. Uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of doing your podcast on YouTube, for example? Um, the reason why I also like it is they they make it very easy to sign up to podcast directories. So what does that mean? Um, you know, places like Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, um, Amazon Music. Uh, they've got like a whole list on their website, uh, which enables you to basically just by just doing like a quick filling out like a quick form uh, for each website. Um, you can then automatically get your podcast featured on all of those websites, which obviously you know is a great thing because it means that more people can find out about your podcast. Uh, and like I said, they have a lot of really cool learning materials. They've got like podcasts themselves. They've got podcast courses. They've got industry podcasts. Um, they do a whole wide range of like a really cool things. Um, and they've, I guess one last thing that I will say, uh, which is why I really like them, um, is they do have like a share your achievement thing. So every time you reach, whether it's, you know, the amount of people that have listened to all of your episodes, the amount of people, um, you know, where your episodes listen to, you can also see analytics for that, the amount of episodes that you've produced. Um, they also give you like a, a achievement that you can share on your social media for that as well. Um, I just think that's really nice because obviously, you know, as you're progressing with your podcast, you might be thinking, oh gosh, like I said before, you know, how many people are really listening? you know, all these episodes that I'm releasing and, you, you know, it's really great to, to celebrate these achievements. So yeah, when we, when we get our 50th episode out, uh, we'll, we'll be doing something nice for that. Um, but yeah, they're, they're our MC of the month. Uh, and if you want to learn more about them, uh, again, we'll have their MC of the month page link at the bottom, but also, um, if you type in Buzzsprout into Google, you can find out more about them. But uh, as all things must come to an end, we have come to the end of today's episode. Uh, and I first off want to say uh, a huge thanks to Shania to being uh, not only an amazing guest speaker, but an amazing guest speaker to end season four. Uh, I think I didn't know I was the last person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, because like I said, yeah, it's no, no, no it's, it's honestly been amazing to talk to you. Um, I know I know you may have thought you were waffling, but like I said, all the amazing stuff, you were saying amazing things, giving all this incredible advice. Advice, um, which, like you said, it gave me a lot to think about. You know, maybe next time when this question is asked, I will be, you know, maybe maybe I'm saying, you, yeah, I, I might be saying you're the person. I might be saying you're the person. Um, but yeah, honestly, it was really good to know more about you. Um, now, I know you mentioned it before, you know, you spoke about your podcast, um, but our, our listeners might be thinking, you know, we want to know more a bit about Shania. We might want to know a bit more about some of the content that she's writing for. Where can we see it type thing? So uh, essentially, I just wanted to hand over to you uh, before we end the episode and just say if you've got any links or anywhere that people should go to whether it's to find more to find more information about for why and um, to find more information about yourself to see some of the content that you're writing where's the best place for them to do that uh, so for why is on pause but like I said we're definitely going to make a comeback and you guys can listen to any of our content that we've already made ranges from many different things to do with social commentary um, so that's at forwhy.podcast on Instagram it's f-o-r w-h-y dot podcast I was like why can't I spell for why <laughs> I forgot my own Instagram handle um, and then for me um, there's no current updates of what I do but my Instagram is very open it's personal but also I share a lot of things that I do so for like if I upload stuff about Vice or upload stuff that I've done for Daily Express you can find it at my personal Instagram which is Naya N-I-Y-A-H underscore Kings K-I-N-G-S-S -S. yeah that's, that's me that's me 
Beyonce. Thank you very much. Uh, and yeah, if you if you want to check out those links, uh, please make sure that you do. Uh, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe. It's always appreciated because uh, you're an amazing audience. Uh, if you want to see more episodes like this, make sure you subscribe to our Patreon page so you don't miss when these new episodes come out and you can get early access as well as a few other perks as well. Uh, and the link for that is in our bio. Uh, is in, sorry, it's in the description. Well, it's in our bio, but it's also in the description for the video. <laughs> Uh, and finally, I guess for the for the last time for season four, I just want to say a huge thanks. Uh, like I said before, this this uh, this is not the end. We will have uh, some some new 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 content, uh, whether it's season five or some of our additional content. Uh, I won't spoil the surprise just yet. Um, but yeah, keep an eye out for that. Um, and just yeah, enjoy yourselves. Uh, I think at the point of this episode coming out, it should either be around the, coming up to the Christmas period or very close to it. So um, yeah, enjoy if you're if you're on holiday, enjoy your holiday. If not, enjoy the Christmas period when it comes. Uh, and yeah, it's been, been a pleasure. We'll see you guys for the next time that we pick up the mic. So uh, that's a bye from us here. Enjoy your days. And yeah, see you all soon.